Hi everyone, uh, this presentation's topic is going to be uninformed search. And just to review what we did uh, last time, uh, our last topic was agents and state space problem formulation. So we talked about all the different types of agents and, and what they can be used for and, and what their different priorities are. And then we also talked about problems and how we want to formulate problems as state space uh, problems. And the reason that we want to formulate them like this is that it allows agents to come in and systematically solve these problems. So given some problem, the first thing that we do is define a state representation. And for example, over here on the right, we have the um, eight tile puzzle problem. And our state description or our, our state representation could be a three by three array of integers where each value represents the number at that cell and a value of zero represents the blank tile. And given some state description, we want to define operators or actions to change it. So in the eight puzzle problem, we might say, okay, move the, uh, the blank tile to the left or move the blank tile to the right. And that action is going to change our state in some way, and it's going to generate a new state. And once we've formulated a problem, we have ways of describing our states and, and describing the actions that you know, allow us to change our state then we can start using searching to, to solve it. And so there are a lot of different searching algorithms and the first class of searching algorithms that we're going to talk about here uh, are uninformed search algorithms. Uninformed search algorithms are algorithms that use no additional information other than what is described in the problem formulation. And the alternative to this is informed search and that's what we'll cover next time. Uh, but uninformed search problems, they just take the problem formulation, the information that, that is in that, and that's what they use to, to search through the state space uh, to find the goal. A few of these algorithms are breadth-first search, depth-first search, and uniform cost search. And the way that they're different, uh, you know, mostly is in the way that they expand the nodes. So there are some other differences, but in general, the way that they choose which nodes to expand is going to be different. But all of them are going to maintain a tree structure of states. So we're going to be forming a tree as we search through the state space to find the goal. And really, each algorithm can be boiled down to this really basic loop. We're just going to repeat this until the goal is found or there are no nodes left to explore. We're going to choose a node to expand, which we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, new states are generated by, by expanding that node. Um, and when you expand a node, you apply all the actions to whatever your current state is. And when you apply all the actions, you, know, you get a, a list of new states. And that list of new states is added to something called the open list. And then our search tree is, is updated. Uh, then our expanded node, the one that we just expanded, is added to a closed list. And then we can check for the goal or we can continue on. And we're just going to repeat this process until we find that you know, we, we finally reached the goal. So what we're going to do in, in this video is just walk through an example. So on the screen, uh, we've got some graph up here in the top left. So we've got some number of nodes and they're, they're labeled alphabetically. Uh, we have a search tree down below the graph, and this is going to change as we go on. We're going to see how the tree is formed. Over here on the right, we've got a few variables that we're going to be filling in. We have something called the node. That's going to be the current node that, that, we're, that the agent is quote-unquote at. Uh, we've got the open list, which is going to be the list of nodes that are in our search tree that we have not expanded yet. And then we're going to have our closed list, which is the list of nodes in our search tree that have already been expanded. And then here in the middle, we've got the basic loop of breadth-first search, or, or really for any uninformed search algorithm. And lastly, at the top, it just shows the goal. Find a path from A, this one up here, down to node F, which is down here at the bottom of the graph. And so again, the, what we're going to do is just walk through all of these steps until we get a path from A to F, and hopefully you should begin to see or understand the behavior of these algorithms. So our first step is check if our open list is empty, and if it is, then we return failure. We do this because, again, our open list is the list of nodes that we, we, we've reached. They're, they're in our search tree, like we, we know about them. 
but we have not expanded them. So if we find that there are just no nodes left to expand, then that means that uh, there is no path from the initial node to the goal node, in which case we would return failure. The next step is to set the current node. And we do this by popping off of our open list. So in breadth first search, the open list is a first in first out queue, or you, know, you could just call it a queue. So every time that we pop off of this data structure, it's gonna pop off the front of the data structure. So in this case, we only had uh, one thing in our open list, but as we go on, we're, we're going to, to have more. So here, at you know, after we check to see if we still have nodes left to explore, if we find that we do, then we go ahead and we pop off that open list of nodes that are left to explore, and we set that as our current node. So that's the node that uh, you know, we, we consider the agent to uh, be at, like the, the state that it is currently visiting. Okay, and so then after we set our current node, then we're gonna check if that is the goal. So sometimes that's really simple uh, test. You know, you can just say, is the node equal to the goal? Sometimes you have more involved goal conditions. But in general, after we set the, the new node, we're gonna check, is that node the goal node? Is that the one that we're looking for? And if it is the one that we're looking for, then we return success. If it's not the one we're looking for, we just continue to press on through the algorithm. And so after we check, uh, if it's the goal and we find that it's not, then we're going to add that to the closed list. And the reason we do this, again, is that the closed list is the list of nodes that we know about, they're in our search tree, but we, we have explored them already. So technically we have not expanded this node yet, and you could add this call, closed list dot add node, to the bottom of the, the, the loop, uh, but it doesn't really matter because we're about to expand it anyway. So at some point in this, um, in this block of code, after we check if it's the goal, we're going to expand it and we're going to add it to the closed list. Okay, so now that we have done that, now it's time to expand the node. And in order to expand the node, we're going to apply all actions to that node to generate a list of new nodes. And that list of new nodes is gonna be considered the, the children of that node. So in this case, if we look up at our graph up here on the top left, we're at, we were at node A. Uh, the nodes that we can reach from node A are going to be C, D, and B. And it looks like here we're actually adding them on clockwise. So if we start at A and we, we point upwards and then we move around, we rotate clockwise, we, we reach B first, then we go to D, then we go to C. So down here in children, our array of children nodes is gonna be B, D, C. So for each one of these children, we want to you know, attempt to add them to the open list. So we're gonna start with B, and we're gonna check two things. Is B in the open list, or is B in the, um, the, the closed list? So if B is in neither of those, then we're going to add that child, B, to the open list. And so what we're checking for here is, have we already you know, found B from some other node, or have we already expanded B? If we've done one of those two things, then you know, we, we've already considered B, B is in our search tree, we don't need to, to add it to anything. But if it's not, if we find that it's not in our closed list, we have not expanded it, and we haven't even put it in our open list yet, then we're gonna go ahead, create a node object for that child, which here is B, and add that to our open list. When we do this, our search tree changes. So here we see there's a branch from A to B, or not a branch, um, uh, an edge. So we form an edge from A to B. So now we're going to move on to the next child. So uh, by the way, this little C is you know, supposed to represent the element in the children array. So now C is equal to D. So we're on to the next child of A. We're again going to check if that child, D, is in the open list or if it's in the, the closed list. And if it's in neither of them, so if, if both of these return false, then we're going to create a new node object for, for D and add that to the open list. So now if we look up here, our open list has, has changed again. It is now B and D. And our search tree over here on the left has changed again. We have a new, um, a new child of A and it is D here. So we, we, we press on because we have a third child. 
we're going to set the child equal to C, check if it's in the open and the closed list. If both of those return false, we add C to the open list and we add C to our search tree. So now what our search tree is, is telling us is that we started at A, so A is the root node, which means it's the initial node, and from A we can reach these, uh, these nodes B, D, and C. If we look at our open list, we have these nodes B, D, and C in our open list saying that we, we know about these nodes, they are, they are in our search tree, but we have not expanded them yet. And so at this point, we're going to go back to the top of the list. Okay, so we're back at the top. And then the first thing we're going to check again is, is our open list empty? And in our case, it's not. It's got three elements, so we move on. And then we're going to pop off of our open list. So keep in mind, again, that when we're using breadth first search, our open list is a first in, first out queue. So whatever that first node is in there, that's what our node is going to be. In this case, it is B. So then we check, is B equal to our goal? Uh, it's not. B is not F, so we, we can't stop here, so we have to move on. We're going to go ahead and add B to our closed list, and then we're going to get the children of B. So remember, we're adding these on clockwise, starting at 12 o'clock, so point up, and then go clockwise. We would reach E, and then we would reach A. So our children is going to be an array E, A. So node E and node A, both of those are reachable from our current node, which is B. So let's go through these children. So first we set it to E. We check is E in our open list and is E in our closed list. Both of those are false, so, so we can see that E is not in our open list, E is not in our closed list. So we're going to go ahead and create a node object and add E to our open list. Keep in mind again that when we do this, uh, in order to, to visualize this, um, our search tree is changing. So our search tree adds a new edge from B to E. And so what's interesting here is that now that we have two edges, we have a path from A to E. So if we're looking at this node E right here in the search tree, we, we, we have you know whatever the, the node object is, but we also have a path. And that path is going to be able to trace up from E to its parent, so from E to B, and then from this node's parent, or, or to, to this node's parent, which is A. So right now, if we look at node E, if we trace all the way back up to the root node, which is A, we would get a path A, B, E. Okay, pressing on. So then we're going to go to the next item in the, in the chi children array, which is A. And we're going to check is A in our open list and is A in our closed list. In this case, uh, A is in our closed list. So if A is in our closed list, we're not going to add it to the open list again. The reason is that we've already expanded it. We already know everything that we need to know about A. There's no reason to expand it again. So we just move on uh, and go back to the top of the loop. All right, so we check if our open list is empty. It's not, so we press on. So our new node is going to be D, because let, let's go back. Let's look at our open list. We had D, C, and E, first in, first out Q. So when we pop off, uh, our node is equal to D. We check if that is equal to our goal, which is F. It is not, so we continue on. So we add D to our closed list, and then we want to expand D, right? So we want to get a list of children for D. And so D is like kind of central in this graph here, so it's going to have quite a lot of children. So if we start uh, pointing up and go clockwise, we get E, G, F, and A. And so you can already see some of these are already in our closed list or our open list, and some are not. But we'll start with E. Uh, e is the, the first one in the ch children array. So E is already in our open list. We got to E from B. So we're not going to add it to our open list. Next, we go to G. We see that G is in neither our closed list or our open list, so we're going to go ahead and add G to our open list. Keep in mind again when we do this, our search tree changes. So now we have a link, f or we have a whole path from A to D to G. Then we go to F. So same thing for F. It's it's not in our open list, not in our closed list, so we can go ahead and add it. And now we get a new path in our search tree, which is A D F. And then we go to A. And we know that A is already in our closed list, so there's no reason to add that again. So we go back up to the top of the loop. Some variations or, or some implementations can actually stop right here because we know that our goal is in our open list. And we find that 
okay, our, our goal is in our open list. We can just take whatever our path is through the search tree and return that. In this video, we're going to go ahead and press on so that we can see more iterations of this algorithm and, uh, you know, make sure that we understand its behavior. So we're going to, again, check if our open list is empty. It is not, so we, we, we press on. Our new node is going to be C, and note I'm going to, you know, combine some steps here. Uh, so we pop off the open list, we set our new node to C, we check if it's the goal and it's not, so we go on, add it to the closed list, get its children. C is only connected to A, so it's only child is A, and we know that that's in our closed list, so we don't need to add it to the open list. All right, back to the top, we check if our open list is empty, it's not. Uh, we set our new node, which is going to be equal to E. It is not equal to the goal, so we continue on, add it to our closed list, and get the children for E. So let's look back up here at the graph. Uh, so when we move counterclockwise, we get H, D, and B as children of E. So we go through each child. Uh, we'll go to H, which is the first one. H is in neither the open or the closed list. So we add it to the closed list, and then we also update our search tree to include H. We go to D. We know that we've already expanded D. There's no need to expand it again. We go to B. Same deal. We've already expanded it. And then we go back to the top of the loop. Next, our new node is going to be G. Uh, that was the next one in the open list. Um, we check if it is the goal. It is not the goal, so we just continue to press on, add G to our closed list, which our closed list is getting pretty big now. Then we're going to get all the children, but as you can see up here in the graph, G only has one link, and that's just to D. So we check if D is in the open or closed list. It is here in our closed list, so we move back to the top of the loop. So we check if our open list is empty. It's not, so we move on. We pop off the open list, and the first one is now F. So when we get here, finally, the node is equal to the goal. Right? Our node is F, our goal is F. Uh, we can break out of this loop here. Okay, so we have broken out of our uninformed search loop, and we know that our node, our current node uh, variable, is equal to the goal. It's, it's F. And I've highlighted the, the final path here in red, A, D, F. And you, know, you and I can visualize this very easily, both in the graph and the overall search tree. But in the software, we, we still have to actually find this final path. Uh, we've been maintaining the current node throughout the entire uninformed search algorithm, but we aren't really maintaining like an explicit uh, tree uh, data structure. So there, there is a search tree that is kind of created by all the nodes that we've been exploring, but in our software or in our algorithm, you've noticed that we, we've only really been maintaining one node variable at a time and that is, you know, whatever the current node is. So luckily there's a pretty easy solution to this. Uh, it involves creating a specific node class and then a basic while loop, uh, which is shown here. So in the previous slide in the uninformed search algorithm, we were creating node objects whenever we added things to the open list. And these node objects are going to have some value variable, right? So I put it as a string here just to represent like A through F. It could it could be whatever is, is supposed to be held by your node, whatever value that is. But then also we have a reference to a parent node. And the parent node is whatever its parent node would be in the search tree. So if we come look at F, its parent node would be D. If we go to D, its parent node is going to be A. If you go all the way down here to H, you would have a big uh, chain of from H to E to B to A. And so in order to find this final path based on these parents, it's actually a pretty simple while loop. So first we're just going to initialize an, an empty path variable. Um, and then we're going to, for our while loop condition, it's just going to be while the node is not equal to the root node, which you know would be like the initial node that we started our, our path at. We're going to add the current node to the path. So in this case, it would be F. And then we're going to set that node equal to its parent. So this is just like moving through a linked list. Um, so whenever we set node equal to node.parent, if our current node is F, then it's going to change to D. So now we're at D. We know that D is not the root node. We add D to the path, and then we set D equal to its parent, which is going to be A here in the search tree. 
So now our, our while loop is going to terminate because we have reached the root node. So we just add one more call at the end, which is just add the current node. And we, we can do this because we know that the current node is going to be the root because we will have just broken out of this, this while loop here. Uh, and with this, you know, uh, simple node object, uh, sorry, node class, and uh, this simple while loop here, you can actually trace back up from whatever node you're at all the way up to the initial node or the root node in the search tree, and that will give you your final path from the initial node to the goal node. And so that's it. So we, we looked at how breadth first search will search through the state space, all the possible states that the agent can reach. Once we find the goal, we show how to go from that goal all the way back up to the initial node to find the final path. So for the rest of the video, we're just going to go through depth first search. So depth first search is also an uninformed search algorithm. We're going to give it the same goal, which or the same task, which is find a, a path from A to F. We're going to be maintaining a search tree and we have this graph up here, which is the same graph as before. We have the same set of operations here. So this is the same set of commands that was in a uh, breadth first search. And the difference between depth first and breadth first is the open list. So previously the open list was a first in first out queue. Now it's going to be a last in first out queue, which as you probably know, it's also just a stack. So we could also change this to just a stack. And this change here is going to change the way that we explore the state space because it's going to, you know, change the order in which we expand nodes. And so what we're going to see in this case is that depth first search is actually going to reach the goal a little bit faster than breadth first search. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to set the node equal to openlist.pop, which A was the only thing in there, so A becomes the node. Uh, by the way, I'm going to try to skip a few steps here just for the sake of time. We know that that's not our goal, so we add A to the closed list. And we get the children of A. So the children going in clockwise order starting like if pointing up from A and then going in clockwise order, we get B, D, C. And then for each of these children, we're going to go through and check if they're in the open list or if they're in the closed list. If they are in neither of those, then we create that node object, you know, setting its value and its parent, and we add that node object to the open list. Then we're going to go to D, check the same thing. That's in neither of them. So we add it to our open list and we change the search tree or sorry, I should say the search tree is changed. We don't actually explicitly change it. Uh, then we go to C, C is the same deal. It's not in neither of our lists, so we add it to the open list. Then we go back up to the top. You know, we, we have elements in our open list, so we're not going to return failure here. Uh, node is going to be equal to C now. And the reason, let me, let me go back one slide, so you can see the open list is, is BDC. Now the open list is last in, first out. So whenever we pop off, it's popping, out, popping off the last element, which is C. So we repeat the same process. It's not the goal. We add it to the closed list. We get the children, which is A. We know that A is a part of our uh, a closed list, so we don't add anything to the open list. Uh, we check if we still have elements to explore. We do. We pop off the open list. We're now node is now equal to D. Um, if the node is equal to the goal, then we return success, but it's not here, so we add it to the closed list. We get the children for D, which you may recall is quite a lot because it's kind of a central node here in this graph. We have four children to consider, so we know that E is going to be added because E is in neither our, our open or closed list, so we add E to the, the open list. Same thing for, for G. Uh, G was in neither of our lists, so we go ahead and create a node object, and we add that node object to the open list. Uh, same thing for F, but A we know is in our closed list. So then we go back to the top, and here we're going to uh, check if our open list is empty as usual, and then pop off the open list. And here our node is now equal to F, which is equal to the goal. So let, let's go back a slide. Uh, or two slides, uh, just to look at this again. So if we look at this here, our open list is now BEGF. And so even though B has like been in the open list for a while, we, we, we got B in our open list on like the first iteration, we're, we're still not popping it off. We're just going straight to F. And the reason, again, is that the open list is a stack. So whatever the last thing in there was, that's what we're popping off. And in this case, it's F. So we pop F off, and then we're already at the goal with depth first search. 
So we know that we get the same same path from A to D to F. Same thing through the, the search tree, you can see it here. And then we're just going to repeat this little loop of tracing back up each node's parent to get the final path. So these two different algorithms were largely the same, right? Like we use pretty much the same set of commands for both of them. The difference was the data structure that we used for the open list. So breadth first search used a first in first out queue, depth first search used a stack or a last in first out queue. And based on the data structure that we used, that affected how we popped off the open list and eventually how we explored that state space. All right, the order of nodes that we explored with depth first search was different than breadth first search, and that affected how many iterations that we had to do until we found the goal. So we kind of refer to this as like the, the strategy for searching. So the order, the, the way that we pop nodes off or the way that we explore the state space is the searching strategy. And so that's going to affect the number of nodes expanded. So with depth first search, we expanded fewer nodes. Um, and that's going to have implications for the time complexity of the algorithms. And it affects the optimality of the path to the goal. So in this case, we, we found the same path. So it wasn't such a big deal. But in more complicated examples, you'll find that breadth for search in general is, is more optimal than uh, depth for search. So we need to consider the, the complexity, both the time and the space complexities of, of each of these algorithms. Uh, for time complexity, both of them are exponential. Um, so for breadth first search, the time complexity is big O, B raised to the D. B is the branching factor of the search tree, and D is going to be the depth of the solution or the, or the depth of the, um, the goal node. Uh, you can also, so in our case, it would be D plus 1. That's because we, we continue to expand even after we found the goal in the open list, we wanted to keep going until our current node was equal to the goal, in which case our time complexity is a little bit different. Um, for space, this one is going to be a big O, B to the D. So pretty much the same as the time complexity, and you know, unless you do this other thing over here. Uh, for depth first search, the time complexity is also exponential, but a little bit different. So the exponent value is M instead of D. And M is the maximum depth of any node. So the reason for that is that breadth first search explores, uh, basically it explores like the shallowest node at any point in time. Whereas breadth first search is just going to explore one path through, you know, from, from the root node to the absolute bottom of the search tree before it continues to move on to a different path in the search tree. And so what that means is that it can reach the very bottom of the search tree, the maximum depth of any node. Uh, and so that is going to affect the time complexity uh, pretty, pretty heavily. The good news for depth first search is that it only has linear space complexity uh, because you only need to store the, the current path. Um, or if in the book, they actually shows you another method where, you, where uh, the space complexity is reduced even further. So there are some other uninformed search algorithms covered in the textbook. Uh, uniform cost search, which is kind of similar to BFS. There's depth limited search, which is like DFS, but with a limit on the depth, so you don't like continue all the way down to the end of the search tree. There's iterative deepening DFS, where you, you do set a limit, like, like depth limited search, but then you update that limit if you don't find the goal. Um, and so your book has this really nice figure that gives an overview of the, the qualities of the different algorithms. So it has all the uninformed search algorithms, and then it lists, are they complete? What is their time complexity? What is their space complexity? And are they optimal? Make sure that you understand this figure. Uh, you need to understand what the time complexities are for these different algorithms. You need to understand um, you know, what the space complexities are, why they are that way, um, and if they're the complete or optimal. Um, at the very least, you need to make sure you understand for the, understand this table for the algorithms that we covered. So for breadth first search, you should be able to say if it's complete, if it's optimal, and what its time and space complexities are. With depth first search, you need to explain you know why it's not complete, what its time and space complexities are, and why it's also not optimal. Um, so it's best to understand everything in this table, but at the very least, you need to understand uh, breadth first search and depth first search qualities. If you have questions, uh, you know, just just ask me um, either in class or on Canvas discussions or in office hours. Um, any of those are fine.